Hello everyone, I am Xerix Lord Sentinel, and welcome back to Century Economy 2019. The current round of resources had expired, and new rolls were made. With much anticipation, the dice were rolled, with a 2 coming up for value and an 8 coming up for duration. For the next 8 turns, metals would be the most valuable resource. This benefits the Spanish greatly, as they have huge stockpiles of metals at their disposal, and they can quickly get more, too. The Spanish miss quite a few shots, but do manage to take the new dynasty down to two masts. The speedy return has been engulfed in fire and will sink soon. Thompson's Island has been decimated, with all of its flags removed. The Americans could repair the fort, but would need to get a ship right inside it, and quickly too. The Celtic Fury is engulfed in flames and will sink. Unlike the Venture, there is no hope of saving her, as she did not have a shipwright on her to try and stem the fires. The new Ironsides falls victim to fires, as she is hit with a firepot specialist. The number of active Spanish gunships around Thompson's continues to grow. Not wasting time, the Ironsides is sunk by the impatient and vengeful Spanish. A complicated situation north of the Split Island. The Ghost Walker has taken the Delanov under tow, canceling the ship's oarsmen to do so. The Intrepid has been dismasted and the Grampus is down to two masts. The Scorpion, Mano de Dios, has entered the fray and engaged the Constitution, using her Scorpion Blade to automatically remove a mast from the American flagship. The Hephaestus was given an extra action, and with a thunderous broadside attack from Osvaldo de Dios Clement, Thompson's Island was destroyed. The island reset to an unexplored wild island, and puts the Americans in a bind, as they no longer have a base of operations to work from on the front line. At the end of their turn, the Spanish relaunched the Armada Flotilla, placing it behind the docked Assassina. The Auschwan sails out to escort and look after the Raven, as she makes her way back to cursed waters. Across the sea, the Flying Dutchman, Executioner, Phantom, Sickle, and Chummaker search for the Celestin, who is making her way to the wreck by the shipwreck pathway. The presence of the Cursed has made the English and pirates uneasy. Despite the act of combat and the distinct possibility that she could be shot at, the Celestin has made her way to the shipwreck. A quick explore reveals some nice coins, and the Celestin is able to load them all. The Americans continue to fight the Spanish. Though she may be derelict, the Hessian can still move with her oarsmen and cancels the ironclad keyword of the Assassina. The Colossus and Vampira dock at the Spanish trading port, blockading it. The Colossus also succeeds at her broadsides attack, sinking the Assassina instantly. The pirates send their non-eternal ships back through the whirlpool, leaving the Fool's Hope and Flying Dutchman to fight the French alongside Angelica and the Doombox Flotilla. The Fool's Hope has already engaged the Notre Dame, but has only hit once. The Carnage and Flying Dutchman team up on the Vengeance, taking her down to one mast. Between a soup from Angelica and the Doombox, La Possession is also taken down to one mast. Calypso has created more whirlpools, and thus allowed for more pirate ships to slip into French territory. Here, a sizable force has emerged, consisting of the Kanohi Dragon, Raven's Neck, Black Pearl, Revenant, and Harbinger. St. Pierre has almost fallen to the pirates, with one flag left standing, but little hope of being saved. Sensing that the game is shifting, Jack Sparrow instructs Don Pedro Gilbert to round up as many crew to sack as will fit on the Deliverance, and then sacks through to the far side of Voyanui, bow pointed at the French. The grinder looks on, lacking a captain, but suspicious all the same. Back in the bay, the Sisters Rage and Black Pearl are repairing, while the Davy Jones Curse Harbinger makes for the whirlpools. The Carnage is set upon by the Sabre, losing all but one mast, while the Dutchman looks on. The Fool's Hope has been hit by fear from the Terror submarine, shutting down all of her abilities, and putting her in real danger, as she has one mast left standing and is being surrounded by gunships. With the pirates invading in the far north of their territory, the French have sent gunships that were fighting the English to stop the pirates, leaving a skeleton crew of gunships to stem the tide of the English. That said, 
several of their damaged ships like the Revolution and the Magnifique are almost back to full strength. At the end of their turn, the French launched the Mont Blanc flotilla, placing it within S of the trading port on Flattop Island. The Spanish keep the pressure up, sinking the new dynasty and setting the United States on fire. The Denver is trying to keep a hold of the situation, but is outnumbered, and with the Armada looming is outgunned to boot. The Spanish have begun bombarding the American port. The red die signifies the hits on the port. More than five hits will destroy it. The port, however, can repair damage points on its own. Of more interest is the strait to the south of the island, which is narrow, barely wide enough for a ship to sail through. The temple has docked at the island, but has done so only that cuts off ships passing through the strait. Things quickly get out of hand as the Spanish battleship La Fuega arrives, and dismasks the United States in a single volley. Breaking the blockade, the Trinity and Ocean Jet or Corzado lay waste to the surviving American forces. The Enterprise is sunk, but at the cost of the Granada, who has been engulfed by flames. As Spanish ships flood the area, the United States is sunk. The Spanish had thought of trying to scavenge some of the derelict American ships, but have decided that all Americans need to be eliminated. The Intrepid is sunk as another mass is eliminated from the Constitution. The Americans are realizing that retreat is more and more likely, and are trying to save ships as they unwillingly start to give ground. The Constitution is dismasted! The unthinkable has happened, as the Constitution is sunk. Turner is used on a different ship to try and keep the Concordia out of trouble, leaving her wide open to be cancelled by Nemesio Diaz on the Acrosado, who did just that and cancelled Ralph David's Eternal, sinking the Constitution for good. With the anchor of their offense now gone, the Spanish surge through the American line. Already the Concordia has been hit hard, as has the Thomas Jefferson. The Atlanta and Vengeance try to stem the tide, but the Spanish now not only enjoy a numbers advantage, but a canceling advantage as well. The Neptuno does not have accurate cannons, but manages to take a mast off of the Grampus. The Grampus tries to hold the way for the fleeing Ghostwalker, and captured De La Nave. Now freed from the Constitution, the Cristobal sails south, aiming toward the Whirlpool. American reinforcements have arrived too little too late, but could still pose a threat. The Acorazado crossed the stern of the Jefferson, but was cancelled by the Kettering, allowing the Jefferson to live for now. Another Spanish ship has taken her last mast and dismasted the Concorde alongside her. The Chouizian surges forward, slamming into the Concordia, eliminating her last mast. The Americans continue to fight on in the south, but are losing ground in ships. The venture is sunk by El Relampago, but is now at the risk of the wrath of the Pawtucket, who is still somehow alive and firing. The Zion sacks an extra crew and decimates the Atlanta and sinks the Concordia. In a single turn, the Spanish have turned to the tide of not only the battle, but the war as well. With a final statement, the Spanish built El Castillo de Infanta, where Thompson's Island once stood. The cursed pass the pirates and head toward American waters, still looking for the Celestin. The Americans fight on in the south, with the other hired jade ships surging forward to take on the Spanish forces. The Jefferson and Kettering flee southeast, dodging reefs and storms. The Vengeance has repositioned, sailing to just off of Kanohi Island. The Americans are willing to fall back from former pirate territory, but they will draw the line at Kanohi Island. The pirates have destroyed St. Pierre, opening up an island for them to base short-term operations off of. The pirates are moving, with the Zeus finally leaving the Devil's Maw and making for the military port on Tutorial Island. The English continue to fight the French in and around the portal, as the Black Knight and Forge have made the trip over. Emerging from the portal, however, or more accurately, sailing through it, is the Premier Republique, her sights set on the English. The French sink the Doombox, and fear strikes the fool's hope again, 
shutting down her abilities. The Dutchman has tried to draw fire from the French and keep them off of the fool's hope, but is simply worn down to two masts standing for her efforts. The Dom is given a second action, and does not miss, sinking the fool's hope for good. The French then direct their focus on the Dutchman, but only manage to take her next to last mast. The saber sails over and connects twice to sink the Dutchman. Unlike the fool's hope, she still had her access to her eternal ability, and so will simply reappear at the pirate home island. The same cannot be said of the Black Knight, who was essentially one-shot by the French and sunk instantly. The forge was also damaged in the French counterattack, losing two masts. A storm moves over Castillo's island, damaging the fort. The fort will take damage every turn until the storm moves away. And that wraps up this report. The Americans are in a tough spot. Can they recover? Can anyone stop the Spanish? Will the English and French conflict escalate? Or the conflict with the pirates? And what have the curse been up to? If you want to see what happens next, make sure you're subscribed. If you liked what you saw, hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.